If you are a longtime viewer of this YouTube channel, you know we do PC builds, a lot of them, and a lot of PC related content. If you haven't been to this channel before, be sure to hit that subscribe button if you want to see content like that. But this video is going to be a total change of pace. I went on eBay and purchased a MacBook for $300, and you might be wondering why. Well, I will tell you exactly why after a word from today's sponsor. As a creator, creating content is almost second nature. Once the idea hits my mind, I almost go into autopilot doing scripting, recording, and editing until it's complete. However, getting it seen on the crowded space that is YouTube is a whole other challenge. With TubeBuddy though, you get access to a wide range of tools like tag optimizers and search ranking results to help you optimize your content to succeed on YouTube. Want to give it a shot? Click the link down below to learn more. So TLDR, this is a MacBook Air 11 inch that comes with a 1366 by 768 display and comes in at a price point of around $300 on eBay used. This is a manufactured refurbished laptop and if you are looking into diving into a laptop for around 300 bucks, it is definitely a laptop you can consider. But for those who don't like Mac OS, there are a lot of other alternatives out there for you. Now let me get this out of the way. I am a first time Mac user, so diving into this laptop was a very interesting experience because because I have no experience with OS X. Just diving into the laptop and trying to learn some of the commands, the keyboard shortcuts, it was kind of a headache at first. But over time with some mistakes and a couple Google searches here and there, you were really easily able to adapt from Windows to something like this. As I mentioned before, this is an 11.6 inch laptop with a 1366 by 768 display. One thing I have to say about the display, it is awful. It is one of the worst laptop displays I have ever seen. And on a premium laptop like this, even though it is an older version of a premium laptop, it is really unacceptable. Look at these viewing angles. Like, this is horrendous on a product from Apple, and I know this was supposed to be their budget offering, but cutting corners on a display like this was definitely not the way to go. And even to this day, this laptop screen is far and ahead worse than some of the other really budget options that I've seen on the market. There are some Chromebooks that have better displays than this one, and that's definitely saying something. But really, the screen is the only hardware flaw I really see about this laptop. The trackpad and keyboard are amazing. The trackpad is far and ahead one of the best trackpads I have ever used on any laptop whatsoever. Even on some higher end Windows laptops that I've tested from Computer Upgrade King and some that I've tested just from friends who own them, this trackpad is far and ahead way better. And that's something that I've heard a lot from people who use Macs as their daily driver. The gestures that come built in with the trackpad are really nice within Mac OS. And I really, really just enjoy how it feels browsing around the operating system. The keyboard is the same story. The backlight is very subtle and has that Mac look to it that I know all of you have seen before. And it just works. It's a really nice keyboard. There is some slight travel to the keys themselves, which is a far better approach to what most modern ultrabooks are doing, where it's a very thin chiclet key to where you really have no responsiveness and you're just like hitting the board all the time. These things actually have some travel to them and it really makes for a much more enjoyable typing experience. These are refurbished models. So my model in particular isn't perfect. There are a couple dings on the edges right here and a couple of scratches and stuff within the ports themselves. Uh, but overall, the keyboard looks pretty damn new. I think they probably replaced the keyboard on this thing. Um, just a few minor scratches around the body, but it doesn't hinder the overall performance or usability of this laptop. But it's something you should definitely keep in mind if you plan on buying from the seller, which I'll have located in the description down below. As far as I.O. goes, this thing comes with two USB 3.0 ports, a headphone jack, and a MagSafe charger port, which is a really awesome thing that I wish Apple would bring back or another Windows manufacturer would bring back. For those who aren't familiar with this kind a charging port from Apple, it basically prevents people from tripping over your power cable and bringing your laptop with it. So if you hit off the power cord, it just disconnects automatically, but it is sturdy enough to stay in there without it randomly dislodging. There is a Thunderbolt port right here, but sadly, I do not have my external GPU dock anymore that I could use this with. Mac OS is pushing out support for external GPUs, so this could be a good culprit for a GPU test in the future, maybe? Let me know in the comment section down below if you're interested. While be it there are options with more USB ports on them, to is normally the standard that I recommend for things like a mouse or if you want to add like an external hard drive, you have the ability to do that. 
As far as the webcam goes, let me give you a demo real quick. As you can tell, the camera on the MacBook is actually not that bad. It's pretty good for your occasional FaceTime call and Skype call, and the microphone is acceptable. I'm sitting here in a kind of loud room with my PC running in the background, and you can get a good idea of the background noise. I really like this webcam. It's pretty on par with anything I've seen. Now let's dive into the specs real quick. This thing rocks an Intel Core i5 4250U processor. With Mac OS, it's a really optimized operating system that works across a wide range of MacBooks. As you can tell, some of their older MacBooks dating back to 2009 and 2010 actually still have support for the brand new operating system that's about to be released. And on four gigs of RAM, I was able to do pretty much all the tasks that I wanted this thing to do. Respond to messages on Slack, use Discord, have a couple tabs open in the background, and be to play some light games like Minecraft for example. You're not going to be playing any crazy games out there, but Minecraft runs perfectly fine around 50 to 60 FPS on this screen. With the lower resolution display, it makes it much easier to push those pixels and it looks just fine. I was even able to use this to create a thumbnail for a video within Photoshop. While be it it wasn't a super fluid experience, I was able to dive into it. The one issue I did have with this laptop is it wasn't able to update to the latest version of Mac OS so I could install Final Cut Pro. For some reason it kept capping out a few revisions below, even though this thing is on the supported list for the new Mojave version that's going to be releasing, so I'm not 100% sure what was up with that, but that is something to consider when looking into these laptops. It may just be a bug with the OS installation. I'm reaching out to the seller to discuss the issue, and I'll let you all know in the comment section if I come up with a result. Now you might be wondering why I'm promoting a device that's from 2013 and has some very lackluster specs. Well, if you look at the used laptop market compared to the new laptop market right now, there's a pretty big gap gap. The build quality of this laptop for only $300 is going to be far better than any other Windows or Chromebook that you can get on the market, and you get the benefit of Mac OS. Let's say you have an iPhone. You can actually respond to iMessages on this device and do stuff like FaceTime calls. For those who have an iPhone, that kind of benefit is really valuable with something like this, because if you're off in college and you get a text message, you can reply directly from your laptop without having to pull out your phone. That is one of the benefits of the Apple ecosystem, is just everything tying together. There's really no way to reply to iMessages on Windows, and having something like this could be pretty beneficial for you. But what is my overall takeaway of this laptop? Do I recommend you pick it up? Well, it kind of depends. If you have a budget of $300, it's definitely worth considering. For the money, you are getting a hell of a laptop that can do pretty much everything you need. Some of these laptops, like mine right here, do have an older battery in it. This one actually has the original battery from 2013, so I'm definitely replacing this battery if I'm going to keep this long term. Still haven't decided yet yet if I'm going to keep it long term or not. But even with the older battery, I'm still getting decent battery life, around four to five hours on a single charge. The battery is just kind of depreciated and it looks like the person who used this laptop kept it plugged in like 24 seven. So the poor battery on this thing is just not having any power cycles. So uh, it definitely needs to be replaced and it will make a much better experience and have much better battery life with a brand new battery. And those can run you anywhere between 40 to $60, depending on what make or model you go for. But overall for this price range, range, you can't beat the build quality and the experience that you're going to get. Over time, you will lose support for updates from Apple with this laptop because it is an older laptop, but I believe the overall value you're getting back with the build quality and the user experience right now far outweighs the cons that you would have with lack of support in the future. If you're a diehard Windows fan, this laptop is most definitely not for you, but if you're somebody who's a little bit adventurous, maybe has an iPhone or is willing to dive into the Mac OS experience, I give this MacBook a big thumbs up because it's definitely a decent value for the money and could be something fun for you to pick up if you're going back to school or you're just somebody who wants an excuse to try out an Apple device. It's definitely worth considering. And that about wraps this video up here guys. If you like this video leave a like down below and comment MacBook in the comment section down below if you made it this far. I would love to know what you all think about this device. If you ever consider picking up a MacBook or if you just absolutely hate any Apple product under the sun, please comment down below. I would love to hear your thoughts. Follow us on Twitter and join our Discord community if you want to continue the discussion there. We have a lot of people in there who who like to talk laptops, tech, and even cryptocurrency. So if you're into that sort of thing, check the link in the description down below. Thanks again, guys, for watching this video, and I hope to see you all in the next one. Peace out.